So guys, the Boeing 767 is actually a very successful aircraft and according to Wikipedia, Boeing has delivered well over 1100 aircraft up to date. Now there are many airlines around the world who operate the plane in all of its variants, apart from British Airways who plan to retire them by the end of the year, but it just goes to show how versatile the medium to long haul plane actually is. So if the plane is that successful and airlines are still holding on to it, why doesn't Boeing consider Max in the 767? Surely there's a market out there for it, right? Well, it actually depends on how you look at things. Now a 767 certainly does make sense as long as it's done simply as possible to make sure the end product is cheap. There's simply no need for what its intended purpose actually is and anything all new is too expensive, time consuming and basically a waste of time, effort and money. So if Boeing decided to go ahead, then I envision the Max being a cheap, quick and easy upper end of the middle of the market plane with the A321neo occupying the bottom end. Now as it is at the moment, the 767 directly competes, well, essentially with nothing. The 767 is essentially the middle of the market plane for the last generation. So if you want to carry around 220 passengers for up to 3000 miles, then the A321neo is probably the best option. But if you want to carry over 250 people and a bunch of cargo for 5000 miles, then you have the A330neo and the 787 as an option. But none of these choices is ideal for the middle of the market job. The plane will only be a direct replacement for the 767s, the 757-300s and possibly the A310s. Now as for the larger options, the 787 and the A330 are both 70 to 100 tons heavier on empty weight than the 767. Regardless of how good their wings actually are, they're not going to be able to beat the trip cost of a 767 Max using the same generation engines. Not only does that extra metal cost a lot of money to fly around and we all know that nothing on the aircraft is cheap and there are a few things more expensive per pound than aircraft parts. Now with these points mentioned, the 767 is actually in a unique position in that virtually every part needed to max the plane are not available and certified but they are available in Boeing's part shop and they are all currently in production and certified on Boeing aircraft. No other aircraft like the Neos and the Maxes included have this advantage and that means a couple of very important things to a MAX program. Quick to design, certify and bring to the market which is quicker than any other re-engine job out there. Now the most important part of the program are the engines and even these are in Boeing's part shop. The 767 has a long history of using the same 60,000 pounds of thrust engines like the 747 and the MAX would keep that tradition alive. Now the GE NX2B engines are the same generation as used on the 787s, which is perfect for the conversion. Basically the only new parts needed for the 767 Max are the pylons, and there's a lot of room under the wings so they wouldn't even need to touch the gear. Now considering the experience in putting the 747 engines on the 767 wings, I don't think that would be too much of an issue because we already know that the KC-46 already has strong wings which would probably take care of what would be required to handle the extra weight of the GE NX engines. So if you add new engines, a few aero tweaks and maybe some upgraded instruments then you'll have a plane that perfectly fits into Boeing's middle of the market scenario which is 5000 nautical miles, a twin aisle and around 280 seats. But we should bear one thing in mind, that this will only work if the only significant upgrading done is adding new engines. As soon as Boeing will try to make it perfect, then the price will jump and so will the time to market which will further close the gap until Boeing 797. So there you go captains, that was just a few opinions and thoughts that I had on the 767 Max plane. Of course you're totally free to disagree with me on any of the points and if you have any thoughts of yourself then feel free to share them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching my fellow friends, remember to like and subscribe for more aviation videos and I'll check you guys in the next one.